purpose of this video is to show how to resurface a rotor. Of course, the most important aspect of determining whether I can re even resurface a rotor is, is it thick enough? Does it meet the specification? And of course, you'd measure that, make a determination, uh, compare the minimum specification, or sometimes referred to as the minimum thickness, or even discard thickness, uh, as compared to uh, the online uh, service uh, system that we have here, known as ProDemand. You probably want to be about 50 thousandths of an inch, that's .050, uh, above uh, minimum thickness before you would ever want to re try to resurface. If you're less than 50 or 60 thousandths, don't even waste your time, replace the rotor. So, let's go ahead and we'll get to these components as we go. But let's go ahead and turn now over here to the rotor, the brake lathe itself, and get you a little more oriented. I'm going to work on these little tool bits right here. A cut is not going to be any better than uh, its, its, its bit. And what I mean by that is we take off a bit here, these replaceable bits. Some are titanium, some are just carbide. These are probably titaniums. These have got some shadowing and some heat. I'm just going to replace them and you'll get the idea. Make sure things are cleaned off so you have a good surface. Okay. And please use a good sized screwdriver putting them in. We want these bits in their place held. Whoops. We want these bits held in place firmly. A little skinny screwdriver blade like this one here is not going to be sufficient. We want to have some good torque on this and have it sitting in place. Okay, and of course, when one point gets worn, you take the bit, you can rotate it and use it in our corner. There's an, there's an adapter here that works quite well with uh, turning most rotors and it makes it to uh, come on and off the lathe really fast. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one on. Here's the main piece. I'm going to put on just a couple of collars and of course here's the nut. Now this n arbor nut, this is the arbor shaft, we just put everything on here. The arbor shaft, and this is the arbor nut this will go on and stay on. And of course it is left hand thread. The direction it turns and how we're going to cut requires that we have left hand thread. And the only amount of tightness you've got to do is just kind of get your hand on it. You just give it a good, just a good little jerk, a good tug. That's tight enough. There's only about two or three more, three more pieces. I'll grab the, the nut that holds this together, but this has the spring built into it and that's going to keep the cone pushed in place. It's a nice little adapter. Here comes the rotor. It goes on first and the cone. And of course this piece is going to push the cone in place. Sorry. I personally like to have the threads facing out. If you, if you have them facing inward, you'll be turning lots longer. If I have them facing outwards, it only takes a few rotations to tighten this up. And of course, it's left-handed thread as well. And it's got its own spanner wrench. Before I tighten it in place, that would be all the way down by hand. I'll back it off just a little. I'm just going to grab the rotor. Mm. I'm just going to grab the rotor and make sure it wants to sit centered. Just kind of pull it around, tug it around. That way the cone is being pushed in and it's going to keep the rotor centered. Like we did before, only this takes a different type of wrench. It's a spanner type wrench. I'm just going to pop it in place and that's tight enough. 
whenever working on our legs, really it's a good policy not to have long sleeves. You really need to roll them up and get them up. In fact, some machinists will say get them above your elbows. You don't want the revolving work to ever get caught and pull you into the cutters. That'd do some pretty mean damage. So again, when work around, working around a brake lathe, please roll up your sleeves. I've moved to the other side of the machine. The brake rotors on the other side, obviously. Over here is a switch. Now it doesn't look like much, but it's actually critical that we select what we're going to do today. What we will do today is we're going to be servicing a rotor, and that enables this automatic feed when we engage it to work. If I want to do a drum, it'll take a different attachment here, but if I wanted to resurface a drum, when I switch drum, it allows this automatic feed to engage and, f and feed the, the machining process. And we'll show more what that means here in a moment. We've mounted the rotor. We need to put some anti-vibration uh, or silencing uh, mechanism on here. We want a smooth surface. In fact, some folks would say the surface needs to be smooth enough that you could write, it, write on it with a ballpoint pen after you get through resurfacing and sanding. I'm going to use this other style of silencer. Spring it's a bunch of springs with rubber inside. Both work fine. I'm just going to hook him on there. And that again, that'll help keep vibrations down for a smoother surface. When we get cutting along, we're going to, we're going to add one more anti-vibration piece, but we'll wait till it's about halfway out. I'm going to crank. This is how I crank, you know, obviously the horizontal, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, perpendicular. This crank down here, if this isn't centered with, the, with the, my work, my rotor, I can move it back and forth. Okay. And I got it pretty much centered where I think I want it. Might go a little bit more. If these uh, holders, that's what I mean by a holder. Let me take one out. We'll show you what I mean by a holder. This is the bit holder. If these two holders don't, if they really, if one's here and one's way back here, we'd like them relatively the same plane on the same line. It doesn't have to be perfect, just eyeball it, get it where you think it's going to be close to the same plane. And that uh, also enables uh, a better kind of cut. Make sure he's tight. I'm going to double check that both of them are tight. I want no vibrations if we want a smooth resurface. Okay. I'll go ahead and crank it in and we're going to Next thing we're going to do, we're going to find zero. I go about half to two-thirds of the way in. I'm going to turn the machine on. That makes a little noise sometimes. <laughs> okay. These control the depth of my cutter. So as I turn this in, this is moving. That's moving towards the rotor. I'm going to go just till it scratches. That's plenty deep. I'm going to move it. I'll do the same to the other side. I'm going to turn it in just until it barely, barely scratches. You can move this light as you need to, as you can see. Okay. I'm going to take it in now. I'm going to get into, we've got to keep going in, I'm going to go beyond the shiny area just into the rust because that's where the brake pad has been riding, where it's shiny. If I go a little bit wider, the new brake pads will have plenty of room to have a flat surface to ride on. And. I'm into the rust. Yeah, I'm cutting new material, and that works, that's just fine. All right. We often will go anywhere between 
five to ten thousandths of an inch. You just have to guess. If it looks, if it's really ragged, this one here is actually fairly smooth. I'm only going to take off five or six thousandths. If it's really ugly looking, I might, I might take twelve, ten, or twelve. If you take off too much, then of course you run the risk of making the rotor too thin when I'm all done. When you're all done with, with your resurfacing. So, I have found zero. I'm actually, I'm actually going to turn this little collar. I haven't turned the depth. I'm just turning this little numbered collar to zero. Here's the pointer. I'll do the same over here. Okay, so I'm going to crank it in. You can see this detail. I'm going to go into about six thousand. No real science to it, just do your best. You've got to take at least four or five off usually. But five or six is quite common, maybe as much as ten. Okay, now these bars that hold the cutters that are moved by this, they have to be tightened down as well. I don't want those bars to chatter. We don't want the holders to chatter. We don't want the bits to chatter. And of course, we've got a silencer band as well. We've taken a lot of precautions to minimize chatter. I'm going to go ahead and engage now. I'm going to turn this self-feed lever and you'll see it engage. Okay, and it takes a moment for the slack in the lead screw inside here to actually start moving this and have an automated machining uh, action, which again leaves the best, makes for the best type of uh, finish. Okay, I'll shine that a little bit better over here. And let's machine this for a while. When I get out here, all oh, about halfway, I'll put on this adapter. Right now, it's going to be in the way. I think this silencer band would probably hit on it and pull it off the machine. So I'm just going to set it here for now. You could actually walk away from the machine, go get a drink of water, you know, do something else on the car for a while. This takes a little bit. You can see we're starting to resurface just fine. Okay, perhaps it's time to put this on. I'm going to go ahead and just turn it off. It's nice and smooth. Wow, that feels really good. You should be able to put your finger off with practice. Rub your finger across here until it's ragged or smooth. I'm going to set this on. The cutters are actually going to what's right, right against here and push this back as it machines. We'll turn it back on. I'll disengage here in a moment. There we are. I'm going to disengage and go back out even more. Next thing we do, we take some sanding paper or emery cloth, more particularly, more correctly. 150 grit. 120, 150, depends on who you talk to. I'm going to fold it over and we're going to sand on each side for 60 seconds. Okay, just so you know, these cutters, these lathe bits, actually tore metal off. That's why we have to sand and smoothen things up to get rid of the, the tearing marks. If you looked at it on a, under a microscope, it'd look more like it's been torn off. Okay, now we're going to take the disc off brake rotor off. There's for one last step. I know it looks nice and pretty and a lot of guys would say, oh let's just shoot us some brake spray and put it back on the car. Well the preferred method, we're going to get some hot soapy water and give it a scrub. And just give them a good 
scrubbing again. We're trying to remove that fine sanding gray cast iron material we created when we resurfaced it. And there is a non-directional resurfaced rotor. If you want to pat it off with a paper towel, you may blow it off. Yes, it'll probably rust some degree. It's cast iron. It's going to rust readily. But that's resurfacing the rotor.